Capernaum was a fairly large town, a major trade center in Galilee. Caravans came through with international travelers of merchants from both Jew and Gentile backgrounds. A tax collecting center for Romans, soldiers were stationed there to keep the peace. Jesus had adopted Capernaum as his hometown and center of his ministry in Galilee. The largest homes would fit about 50 people. People did not live in homes with separate bedrooms like now. Everything took place in one or two rooms. So we have to picture Jesus in this lesson in a very simple structure packed with people spilling out the door. Now here comes four men carrying their paralyzed friend. These men had heard about Jesus healing people and they were sure that he could heal their friend. So here they come to where Jesus was. When the men approached the house, they could clearly see it was packed. The five of them would never make it through the front door. Motivated by faith though, they were sure that Jesus could heal their friend. So they climbed up on the roof, still carrying their friend. This meant that these friends had faith and determination to see and witness the power of Jesus. But it wasn't their faith and determination that resulted in this miracle. The helpless paralyzed man also had faith in the power of Jesus. Now, homes at that time did not have modern expensive roofing systems as now. The roofs were made of branches that were laid across the ceiling beams. The branches were packed with mud that dried in the sun. They were sturdy enough to walk on, but they could be dug through. With this great effort, no doubt supported by the paralyzed man, Jesus was moved by great faith. The man on the mat came to Jesus to be healed, but Jesus saw a need much greater than his paralyzed legs. He saw the man's sinful heart. Jesus gave this man the greatest gift, the forgiveness of his sins. And when Jesus forgave the man's sins, he became a part of God's kingdom. He would now have a new life here on earth brought back into a relationship with his heavenly father. Let's pause to look at the Pharisees here. The Pharisees were an influential group of religious men whose major goal was to instruct Israel in such a way that the nation would stay true to Judaism and not sway back and forth to idolatry. They taught that the people must keep every bit of the law of Moses plus hundreds of man-made laws. From the Pharisees' perspective, Jesus is just a mere man. So these religious teachers began to question how he could allegedly forgive sins. The traditional Jewish way of atoning for sin at this time was through animal sacrifice, performed in the right way and in the right place. Jesus' actions flew in the face of traditional religious teachings, traditions that the Pharisees had guarded and protected for more than 150 years. Now, Jesus is still new in his ministry. Not many people understood that he had come to proclaim the good news and that he was the final sacrifice to take away the sins of the world. Now, before we dismiss these Pharisees, remember the discussions that you have probably been a part of as a result of religious traditions changing, separating people from traditions long held for generations is difficult and convincing them that Facebook and YouTube can be a vehicle to spread the word of God and that virtual sacraments are still sacraments if our heart and our focus is in the right place, but even pausing our traditions is sometimes a very frightening thing in a world that's frightening enough. The teachers accused Jesus of blasphemy, of dishonoring God's name. Now, Old Testament punishment for blasphemy was death. Jesus knew their thoughts, so he decided to give them even more proof of his authority. He gave them something that they could see with their eyes by healing the crippled man to prove that he could do what their eyes could not see, and that is 
forgive sin. The paralyzed man was carried into the building, but with just the word of Jesus, he left leaping for joy, his legs healed and his sins forgiven. No doubt some of the teachers were angry that Jesus had proven them wrong, but those who had eyes to see and ears to hear were amazed and praised the Lord. This lesson teaches me that we should not be so stuck on our traditional ways that we miss the very presence of God among us. That's the lesson for this week. Have a great week. Bye.